All right. We are going to today study John chapter 10. And this will probably be part one because it's a little longer than some of the others that we've studied. And I don't know why, but God laid this on my heart. So we will read it and see if we can figure out why. <laughs> but even if we don't figure out why, it's good for us to read the Bible. So no matter where we're at. All right. Um, Josie, I'm going to start with you, I think, and then go with Dave and then uh, me. Josie reads in the Living Word and Dave... Li reads in the King James Version, and I read in the um, Amplified Version. <laughs> so we're going to start out with verses in chapter 10 of John. We're going to do verses 1 through 5. Anyone refusing to walk through the gate into a sheepfold who speaks over the wall must surely be a thief. For a shepherd comes through the gate. The gatekeeper opens the gate for him, and the sheep hear his voice and come to him. And he calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. He walks ahead of them, and they follow him, for they recognize his voice. They won't follow a stranger, but will run from him, for they know, don't recognize his voice. Thank you. Mr. Dave? Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that entereth not by the door into the sheepfold, but climbeth up some other way, the same is a thief and a robber. But he that entereth in by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. To him the porter openeth, and the sheep hear his voice, and he calleth his own sheep by name, and leadeth them out. When he putteth forth his own sheep, he goeth before them, and the sheep follow him, for they know his voice. And a stranger they will not follow, but will flee from him, for they know not the voice of strangers. Thank you. I assure you, most solemnly I tell you, he who does not enter by the door into the sheepfold, but climbs up some other way, elsewhere from some other quarter, is a thief and a robber. But he who enters by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. The watchman opens the door for this man, and the sheep listen to his voice and heed it. And he calls his own sheep by name and brings, leads them out. When he has brought his own sheep outside, he walks on before them, and the sheep follow him because they know his voice. They will never on any account follow a stranger, but will run away from him because they do not know the voice of strangers or recognize their call. Now, of course, they're using a natural illustration to illustrate something, and uh, it's not real clear maybe right now what they're illustrating, but when we get farther into the chapter, it will be. So I just want to say that uh, I should have looked up a little bit more of a study on sheep, but um, according to this, the sheep know the voice of the one who takes care of them and recognizes that voice and they follow him because they know he takes care of them and they can be at peace and know they'll be okay and um, but a stranger they don't follow them because they don't know them and they don't recognize their voice and I think it's neat that the shepherd calls each one of his sh sheep by a name and he knows their name, and they know his voice. So he knows their and name lots of times stands for nature. So he understands the nature of sheep. And uh, I think that's cool, too, to bring that out. 
Anybody else got anything else they want to bring out on that? Um, the, um, the first, at the beginning, the first verse, talking about the, uh, um, somebody entering in <coughs> by, uh, not entering, not by the door into the sheepfold, but climbing up some other way uh, is the same as a thief and a robber. So they're, uh, they're describing somebody who is uh, telling them something different than what Jesus is telling us. So ov obviously, um, he wants us to get to know him. And uh, by doing that, we, we, have to, we have to be responsible ourselves to get to know him. We can't rely on just going to church and hearing someone else uh, read the word for you and then you go back home and say, well, I did my part. You know, I'm, they told me when I got saved here at this church that I'm on my way to heaven and uh, Jesus is soon to return, so um, this is all I need to do. And so... So obviously, it's telling us, hey, if, if we find out who he is, then we will recognize his voice. So any, anybody else talking about God, talking about the things of God and the, and the word, we will be familiar with what they're saying. If, if something uh, doesn't add up right, you know, if it's not according to scripture, and then, then you know something's wrong. That's very good. Thank you. And David, good about bringing out some of the spiritual stuff out of the natural stuff. So that was awesome. You got anything else that stands out to you, Miss Josie? Not this time? Okay. All right, let's go on ahead, uh, Josie, if you would, and read verses 6 through 9. Those who heard Jesus use this illustration didn't understand what he meant, so he explained it to them. I am the gate for the sheep, he said. All others who came before me were thieves and robbers, but the true sheep did not listen to them. W uh, how far? Nine. Yes, I am the gate. Those who come in by way of the gate will be saved and will go in and out and find green pastures. Okay, Dave, thank you, Dave. six through nine this parable spake jesus unto them but they understood not what things they were which he spake unto them then said jesus unto them again verily verily i say unto you i am the door of the sheep all that ever came before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not hear them. I am the door by me. If any man enter in, he shall be saved and shall go in and out and find pasture. Thank you. Jesus used this parable il illustration with them, but they did not understand what he was talking about. So Jesus said again, I assure you, most solemnly, I tell you that I myself am the door for the sheep. All others who came as such before me are thieves and robbers, but the true sheep did not listen to and obey them. 
I am the door. Anyone who enters in through me will be saved, will live. He will come in and he will go out freely and will find pasture. I think the I read somewhere anyway there were others before Jesus was born that claimed to be the son of God and they weren't and they had their own agenda so to speak but people who had a relationship with God recognized that they were these people were lying and that they were not God's son and they knew better and uh, I think that is pretty cool so anybody who tried to impersonate Ju Jesus was a thief and a robber according to this and Jesus is the only one because God gave his only one begotten son to be our payment for our debt of sin and so um, that's what I get out of it. <laughs> Anybody else? Um, uh, it al also reminds me of that scripture in uh, Revelations. In chapter 3. He's, you know, Jesus knocking on the door. And, um, you know, if anybody's heard that, heard that, uh, heard a message where they use Jesus knocking on the door of someone's heart, you know, he's wanting to, Jesus is wanting to enter in, and, you know, that's salvation, and, and, uh, well, the, When people do get saved, a lot of times Jesus is still knocking on the door because salvation is just the beginning of a journey in Christ, it, a spiritual journey to know God, to know who Jesus is because who he is is who we really are. And so when sometimes you know it's not everybody but people who get saved and that's all they do they're they're just saved you know and uh, they they only let Jesus in so far you know a visitor comes into your house and where do, where does a visitor go well to the living room sometimes you know to the living room and then you know afterwards it, you leave but, but Jesus wants to come in and live in our house and there's so many other rooms that is that makes up your house so how, how many people are not allowing Jesus to come into every room mm. in their life you know and that's what it's all about he's he's wanting to come in to change us to bring change so that we can bring change to the rest of the world amen is there anything in particular that Drew your attention, Miss Josie? Uh, we already said it all. <laughs> I might start out letting you do the comments after I get done reading this time, just so that you can have a chance to say maybe a little bit of something. <clears throat> we don't have to do it the same way each time. <laughs> all right, we're going to read. In fact, I'm going to change things just a hair on us. 
I'm going to have Josie read 10 verses 10 through 15 and then make whatever bring out whatever hits her between the two eyes and <laughs> and then um, and then Dave can do the same and then I'll I'll do the same that way what we have personally read will be fresh in our mind during the comment time how's that sound anyway verses 10 through 15 please Josie the thief's purpose is to steal, kill, and destroy. My purpose is to give life in all its fullness. I'm a good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. A hired man will run when he sees a wolf coming and will leave the sheep, for they aren't his, and he ha isn't their shepherd. And so the wolf leaps on them and scatters the flock. The hired man runs because he is hired and has no real concern for the sheep. I am the good shepherd and know my way, my own sheep, and they know me, just as my Father knows me, and I know the Father, and I lay down my life for the sheep. Thank you. You want to make a, a comment and bring at least part of it out that really... <laughs> came really a hit you right <laughs> <laughs> well he's just saying that you know like if somebody was hired you know they wouldn't have as much concern for um, his own you know unless it was his own I guess that's a good comment that's kind of normal isn't it mm -hmm. All right, and Dave, you want to read verses 10 through 15 and uh, s say what kind of stands out to you? Thank you. What stands out to you? Or whatever you're 
you're part of a, a church family and you, you need some help. And, uh, so when, when the, the good times are there, you know, oh yeah, it's easy. But when things start to get rough, mm -hmm. uh-oh. <laughs> and you're going to find that out phony. And uh, I need to leave. <laughs> Okay, uh, the thief comes only in order to steal and kill and destroy. I came that they may have and enjoy life and have it in abundance to the full till it overflows. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd risks and lays down his own life for the sheep. But the hired servant, he who merely serves for wages, who is neither the shepherd nor the owner of the sheep, when he sees the wolf coming, he deserts the flock and runs away, and the wolf chases and snatches them and scatters the flock. Now the hireling flees because he merely serves for wages and is not himself concerned about the sheep. He cares nothing for them. I am the good shepherd, and I know and recognize my own, and my own know and recognize me, even... <coughs> As truly as the Father knows me, and I also know the Father, I am giving my own life and laying it down on behalf of the sheep. Now there's that. Many times in scriptures, it, it may, they make a lot of comparisons, don't they? Between the right way or the good way and the wrong way and so on and so forth. And, and th this, it explains rather what sticks out to me is the good shepherd loves his sheep he, and love is not the meaning that here in America we lots of times put to the word love love in God's eyes true love is wanting what's best for the other person and so when the wolf comes to destroy the flock he wants he loves his flock. He loves his sheep. He wants to keep them protected. And so he doesn't concern himself with his own safety. He wants to go protect the sheep, and he's more concerned with their safety. Whereas the hireling, somebody who's just paid money to do the job, his heart's not in it. His heart's not attached to these sheep. He doesn't care about their welfare enough. I mean, I've heard people say, I don't get paid enough to do that job. You know, that job is too challenging. It's, uh, my heart's not in it to the point where I'd be willing to do it for so little pay. You know, that type of thing. And that's what the hireling is. He's, he doesn't care about the sheep other than the wages he gets at the end of the day. So um, with God the Father, he those who accept him and his son and the Holy Spirit, they mean something to him because he cares about them and he loves them. Um, and he wants to, he doesn't, he wants what's best for them because he loves them. And so he's not going to uh, just sit back and do nothing when the enemy comes to try to destroy us. And we can rest in that because some days we just feel like everywhere we turn, there's some kind of opposition coming against us. And uh, you can call it the devil. You can call it somebody else's wrong mindset. You can, you know, you can call it whatever you want. But it's, it's not the way that it needs to be. And, and, but you can rest assured God will help you through that. So, um, and God won't leave you and desert you just because things are getting rough. He's right there with you. He didn't desert Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego when they were thrown in the fire. He was in the fire with them. And I just, I just think that's, uh, that should be very consoling. And another part that comes to me is uh, in verse 10. When it talked about the thief coming only to steal, kill, and destroy, but Jesus came, 
that n not only can we have life eternal, but we can enjoy that life, no matter whether the circumstances are good or bad, because we know God, we can enjoy our life. And that's a little hard to understand, especially when things are going wrong, I think. But we can rest in God, and I think that's part of enjoying life, is knowing God's got it in control. We don't have to worry and fret about what the government's going to do. And yeah, there might be some unpleasant things that we have to go through, but we can rest assured God's going to go with us through those things, and he will help us if we let him. And we just need to keep our relationship good enough to where we can understand and hear his voice when he talks to us so i just think that's pretty awesome right there all right um let's Josie, if you would read verse 16 through 24. And then we're going to end with that. So you feel free to give any comments you have after you read. And then same with Dave. Okay? <clears throat> I have other sheep too in another fold. I must bring them also, and they will heed my voice. And there will be one flock with one shepherd. The Father loves me because I lay down my life, that I may have it back again. No one can kill me without my consent. I lay down my life voluntarily, for I have the right and power to lay it down when I want to, and also the right and power to take it again. For the Father has given me this right. When he said these things, the Jewish leaders were again divided in their opinions about him. Some of them said, he has a demon or else he is crazy. Why listen to a man like that? Others said, this doesn't sound to us like a man possessed by a demon. Can a demon open the eyes of blind men? It was a winter. It was winter, and Jesus was in Jerusalem at okay. the time. Okay, uh, you're reading a little too far. <laughs> oh, <I thought laughs> Sorry, 21. I thought said 24. No. Yeah, did I? I did. <laughs> oh, okay. I'm sorry. It's supposed to be 21. When I glanced at 21, it looked a little bit like a four because of the way they made their one. No. <laughs> okay. Um, I'm still not seeing through my glasses, right? And I'm going to, that's my excuse, and I'm ha sticking with it. <laughs> okay. Anyway, I'm getting off, getting a sidetrack. Okay. Is there anything in particular you want to bring out along that, what you read? I don't know. He just laid down his life voluntarily. He didn't, you know, he he had power to uh, not do it. <laughs> That's a good point. Mm -hmm. A very good point. That shows how much he loved us. I mean, he could have got out of it. <laughs> mm -hmm. Very interesting. All right, Dave, you want to read verses 16 through, and uh, correction, 21, please. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Sorry mm -hmm. about that. I didn't mean to mislead you. Okay, what well stands out for you?
best I can place it, and and have they have come up with a different book other than the Old Testament, and so we came to bring change, and they tell me that it's not not, not about this body. are saying that. Thank you. Those were very good points. All right, in the Amplified, and I have other sheep besides these that are not of this fold. Now, I am not sure what that, I'd have to do more study to give a comment on that, but he is distinguishing that he's talking concerning his sheep, but there's some more sheep out there somewhere. And that would be something worthy of a study in itself to find out what does he mean by I have other sheep besides these that are not of this fold. Is he talking about in other churches he has sheep, maybe, that's not of this church, but they, he, they, came, they asked him to come into their heart and they believe on him and what he did. And, and that's a possible definition of all that. I'm not sure, but that's... Anyway, that's something I was wondering when I first read it was exactly what he meant. Um, I must bring and impel those also, and they will listen to my voice and heed my call. And so where will, so there will be, they will become one flock under one shepherd. Uh, for this reason the Father loves me, because I lay down my own life to take it back again. No one takes it away from me. On the contrary, I lay it down voluntarily. I put it from myself. I am authorized and have power to lay it down, to resign it, and I am authorized and have power to take it back again. These are the instructions, orders, which I have received as my charge from my father. Then a fresh division of opinion arose among the Jews because of his saying these things. And many of them said, he has a demon, and he's mad or insane. He raves and he rambles. Why do you listen to him? Others argued, these are not the thoughts in the language of one possessed. Can a devil, d demon possessed, uh, can a demon possessed person open blind eyes? So, to me, he's bringing out that He died not just for one ch church group that claims to know the Lord. He died for all who come to know the Lord, uh, regardless of what church they go to. They might even be of a, in this day and age, might even be of another denomination. But there's people in there that God sees on our hearts and sees that they truly accepted him. And um, that's kind of my take on that part. And then ha at the last three verses of that, uh, 19, 20, and 21, the religious leaders, I don't know about you, but I've noticed in life that I was in different stages of learning after I came to know the Lord. And there were some things when I first came to know the Lord that I did not understand until I l a later time. <coughs> After much living and much uh, studying of the word, I have a different 
take on a lot of that stuff that I understood when I first got or thought I understood when I first came to know the Lord. But if if you are of an opinion that's different from the church leaders that you're under, have you noticed how sometimes they'll try to say that you're under a curse or that some devil's trying to get a hold of your mind or something like that because it's not the way they were teaching? And uh, there's been lots of that that has happened throughout the years, different people in different ways. And so... Religious leaders label it as demon-possessed, but this other group happened to point out the fact that a person who's demon-possessed cannot make the blind man see. You know, he, he pointed out some instances where this cannot be from somebody who's demon-possessed because someone who's demon-possessed can't do that. So in other words, they were the ones that pointed that out were... were we're thinking, no, wait a minute. At first glance, it looks like it might. Well, like the first time I saw someone who got touched, got the baptism of the Holy Spirit, I thought they were demon-possessed. Because the church I grew up in, you sat in your seat and you, like a statue and listened and were quiet. And the first one that I ever saw that got baptized by the Holy Spirit was anything but quiet. <laughs> and so they started speaking in tongues and shaking and all kinds of stuff. And I'm going, oh, my goodness, where's the back door? What am I got myself into coming here? <laughs> because I didn't understand. I still loved the Lord, but I didn't understand. And then as time went by, I started to understand. And the neat thing is when that happened and I was scared and I was wanting to go through that back door, I couldn't move. God wouldn't let me leave. He wanted me to witness that. And, the, you know, when people submit to God, they do things they would not normally do, but they're not bad things. But they can be alarming because you're not used to people behaving that way. <laughs> so, anyway, that's what I get out of it. I think that's good. And that's very good. All these comments are very good. So thank you. <laughs> well, that's it for our Bible study for today, unless there's more comments that we missed. And if so, speak up. Otherwise, I'm ready for prayer requests. <laughs>